All right, so I've been meaning to do this video. It's a little home lab, home office tour, and COVID update on the status of our company. So uh, between April, well, between the end of March and the beginning of May, we did one service call. So because of that, everybody went and found other jobs. Um, Randy, who I subcontracted to do a lot of electrical and carpentry work, he recently had his voice box removed in a fight with cancer. I believe he's cancer-free, but he's pretty much medically retired at this point. Um, Justin went and found another job and leaves my messages on red whenever I try and call him. So, I can text him. So, he broke my heart. But, that's alright, Justin. If you're watching this, I've replaced you twice over now. So, I have two new helpers who come when when needed at this point and by spring once we start some of the commercial jobs I already have lined up I'll be kept plenty busy so um, that's that um, January was my most profitable month ever so it's safe to say the business is pretty much back to normal now the elephant in the room here that some of you might notice is this is basically a total on camper that I converted to a home office um, everything we do is on site, like 99% of it, even before COVID. And now, post COVID, most, even my residential customers prefer pick up and drop off. And a majority of what our business is, is business to business services and being a managed services provider. So everything we do, I either handle myself remotely or we go on site. So I don't need an office, which has saved me a lot of money and a lot of time because I don't know if the business would have survived. That long of a shutdown if I was renting office space somewhere. This is 150 feet from the house on the property that my better half owned before we ever got together, started making our beautiful children. So, this is the office. It is fed by 50 amps to 220 to a square D home line panel. So, um, the camper panel is no more. So, 12 volt system doesn't work. But all the other outlets uh, work, all the receptacles work. All on that little square D home line guy. So my two workbenches are basically just folding tables with anti-static mats. These nice little LED lights. Uh, I have ESD grounding. So that goes in grounds to the metal frame of the trailer and to an 8 foot grounding rod outside. Which all ties in over here. As well as a grounded floor mat. So I can wear bootstraps if you don't want to jack on to one of these little pre-stripped spots on the ground line. So I have these old um, Dell monitors, VGA and HDMI, and then DisplayPort to HDMI, uh, DVI to HDMI, DVI to, to VGA. And then I have a mini DisplayPort adapter in my laptop bag, so I can plug anything I need to in these old monitors. Under the network, now you'll see the lack of ubiquity. No Unify products here. I did, ha I have installed them for clients, and if you see here, you have a few spare PoE injectors. So I did have Unify in the end 300 days. We added this access, ac yeah, access point outside and I once I installed it and ran the software I pretty much found that why well, I thought I was cheaping out by getting a TP link figure just for outdoors at least originally I realized I liked the ecosystem a lot and for a fraction of the price a unify that I don't really feel like I'm missing anything we'll go through some of the software um, I deployed a new access point in the house I had a new one slated to go out here and then this one back outside again but I ended up using that one on a job because a customer needed one immediately so I just, I'll wait until spring replace it with another AC access point and move this big strong um, guy outside it's only N300 but it has incredible range um, that I already have a dedicated video on the Plex server this was a $25 eBay win It's solid on there. I have it screwed in there. And then this other ear, the other ear on the other side, I have turned the opposite way, so it screws in the wall like that. 
down on the bottom so that screwed in nice and tight just like it was rack mounted so yeah my entire home lab is until i built this was almost 100 percent optiplexes so i used to have two optiplexes in here doing what just this one guy did this is my clear os server that's my internet gateway router does uh intrusion protection virus scanning on all inbound packets so very handy little little firewall soft little firewall operating system i mean it can be in regular standalone server mode but i mean it really shines being used as an internet gateway and then my data recovery optiplex um, both of these are running i5 3470s 8 gigs of ram um, obviously this one's full of hard drives because this one is for data recovery and data transfers the SATA dock and then I added a USB 3 controller so up in the cupboards I have both uh, NVMe and SATA M.2 adapters and a micro SATA adapter so I can pull just about any drive and read it here I dual boots so I have windows with a bunch of tools and then I have um, parted magic but a persistent install not like a uh, the live one off of a flash drive one with some modifications permanently installed to a hard drive so I can mount network resources all that stuff the only problem with that is remoting in isn't like as possible so I typically have to plug it into this monitor if it's a drive that's like blue screening windows or I can't get any of my windows tools to to mount it so uh, my solution to that is I'm going to probably get one of those Raspberry Pi um, KVM network KVM setup so basically streams whatever comes out of the HDMI port so you can access the BIOS and boot into other operating systems instead of relying on the Windows remote desktop access. I have my ancient printer that I've had forever. Yeah, I know this place is a mess. I've been putting off doing a video until it was clean, but then it never got clean. I didn't want to show you on the other door because I have so much. Like junk, mostly all these old computers, tons of these old optiplexes that I was paid to haul away. Also, I don't bother with compressed with can of compressed air. When that little old guy was only forty dollars. So there's that. Plus some ESD protection, ESD mats on the tables, ESD grounds, ESD ground and floor mat. First, then this was the kitchen area that. This area was the bedroom. I don't know if you probably figured that out. Those were two bunks. This area was the kitchen. So then I got my everyday driver. Now, if you follow any of our Facebook, you see like a lot before the graphics card shortage, a lot of high end like gaming PCs, and I play on this. So this is my everyday driver. But this was a $125 eBay um, auction win. Intel Xeon 1660, so 6 cores, 12 threads, 3.3 base, 3.6 boost. So it is definitely a decent little machine for what I paid for it. And then a $100 RX 580. 8GB again, before the graphics card shortage. Dual FreeSync LG 1080p 75Hz monitors. Uh... Basic mechanical keyboard, Logitech, basic mouse, and I got that Steam controller when they were doing the fire sale, so I spent $5 for it. Alright, so I had to stop recording, and I had to do it obviously long enough that it cycled through a new wallpaper, so these guys were bugging me to come in. So as I was saying, this was the kitchen area, I think I already went through the computer, um, for audio, it Bluetooths to the radio up here. The 12 volt system's no good in the camper since I rewired everything to that Square D home line panel. So that goes to a 12 volt adapter right there. Then to some speakers up in the ceiling. Um, this I just covered because there's a skylight there and I put insulation in to try and hold some of the heat. And I haven't done that one yet, but winter's half over now, so. Might as well not even bother. So if it'll focus with the light, that's just kind of boxes of builds from yesteryear and graphics cards you cannot find right now. 
So yeah, that was where the pots and pans went. The little dog now sleeps at my feet. And everything's still a mess, but this is probably the cleanest it's ever going to be. At least any time between now and spring. Hi, right, Rosie. So this is where our internet comes into. This pole is actually a lot higher, but we just have like three foot of snow, so it looks a lot lower than it is. So, silo that a local company converted to a wisp tower. So they have West Socom fiber optic connection there. Well, actually, fiber optic connection of one of the other towers that's then repeated to this tower. So I bridged the house and the shop with two of these. Still haven't even cut away the zip ties because we're supposed to get a bunch of snow. So I did this as quickly as I could going through the crawl space. And then we ended up not getting as much snow as they claim. But that links the two together. Okay, so our bridge comes into here, feeds that switch, which then feeds that access point. Now, I didn't drill a hole through the wall because I promised the wife I wouldn't drill any more holes. So everything here is mounted with double-sided Gorilla adhesive. I really like these. They have included a little mounting plate. This is the revision three of the hardware, this access point versus the one out in the shop, that's revision one. So even though the bridge and the access point are two separate like ecosystems within TP-Link, as in one is uses its own embedded OS and the other one uses the controller software, they both use the newer generation power over ethernet adapters. So that was really convenient. All right, so let's take a look at the software side of things. So this is the bridge on the outside of the shop, the one that feeds the house. So this is the big thing you want to make sure you enable. This will make latency and data speeds almost as if it's hardwired. And when I mean almost, that is because of its Achilles heel. Oh, right there. So the port on this, no matter what your wireless signal is, your port's only 100 megabit. So that's the best you're going to get. I enable the drag and drop at a full 11 megabytes per second from the house to the shop. So... I know I'm lined up and saturating um, the wired connection on the two devices. When I ordered it, I was only thinking about our internet and our Plex server. Our current internet provider um, with our WISP is between 5 and 7 megabits per second. And our average 1080p um, Plex video is under 5 megabits per second to stream with a couple of the 4Ks, I think, barely breaking 15 megabits because of the codec I use when I encode them so and plus most of my kids only have 720p televisions but now that we're getting Starlink and Starlink even in the beta is getting above 150 megabits I really wish I had gone with this but back to this so this is on uh, access point mode with the max stream enabled on the LAN port so you could set up your VLANs you can do lots of things with these these Basically are like the equivalent to a ubiquity nano station. And of course you have all these different tools. So then we're going to switch over to the one that links the house. And this will show you that you are in client mode. Now this is the ones in client mode, again only 100 megabit link. So pretty, pretty basic, not a lot that you really need to worry about here when you're setting it up like this. Um, 
this kind of explains all the modes. I'm going to have it in a router mode too. Let's take a look. This is simply our router. So I have antivirus and all inbound packets. I have intrusion protection. You can go down here and you could run a speed test. So I'm paying for five and two. I'm getting about six and two. You can go in the marketplace and there's a lot of free apps or pay apps. Now, if you watched the first video I ever did on this channel, it was a setup video on this. And I used a Core 2 Duo, one of these older Optiplexes. I was going to do a new video when I migrated to the uh, i5 system. But I literally just logged in with my ClearOS account and told it what server I was replacing. And everything was just done. So I am running the free version, so I cannot submit for any sort of support outside of the community. Not sure what the future of Clear OS is because it is built on Sent OS and Red Hat is, Red Hat is killing Sent OS. So, not sure what they're going to do. But only time will tell as far as that goes. So, that's kind of a quick overview of, of that. And, all right, so let's take a look at the um, controller for the access point. Oh, one thing I forgot to note is that Mac Stream technology, when you enable that um, on one of the TB-Link products, it uses the proprietary system. So regular devices will no longer connect to it as an access point. So once you do that, you completely limit it to, um, to the TB-Link ecosystem as far as what can connect to it. Let's go ahead and launch the controller. second rock star so this will be 480 milligrams of caffeine in the past couple hours I know my channel description says I'll never accept a sponsor but they might make an exception for energy drinks just because of it would probably save me more money than a sponsorship in IT um, products Right, so this is basically like Great Value Unify. So I have that disabled, but you can manage this remotely from an online dashboard. So one thing I will note, um, they have updated the firmware stuff, so it will automatically update your firmware, or you can manually do it. It used to only be able to manually. This one doesn't have any updates anymore because this one actually predates the Omada name. I can't remember what they used to call it before, but the software, the controller software had a different name, but it was still for the TP-Link business class stuff. Um, the main reason why I haven't been in a rush to put AC out here as you see I don't use anywhere near as much data this is mostly probably a um, Plex server so this is local network data that's not um, internet traffic you can go in and you can block it you can have it reconnect get a new IP address block it you can go in and um, give it a bandwidth limitation but as far as internet bandwidth goes it already are, um, Clear OS Gateway automatically does um, load balancing, so I'm not really worried about that.
So by default, when you add a new one, it's automatically going to give it that SSID of whatever you set up originally. So kind of like a roaming mesh type network. But you can go in and override it. I just see on this one, I went in... And I overrode it. So this SSID for this one is shop. Um, you can do, obviously, you can do your own load balancing. You can do isolation so that, like a guest access point, essentially. So it only has access to the internet. It doesn't have access to your LAN at all. And just about anything you can do with the Unify controller, you can do with this. And again, for a fraction of the cost. So that is my ultra budget enterprise kind of network um, one of the main reasons other than the fact that they're free why I went with a lot of these optiplexes um, other than again they're free and I was paid to haul them away is the sound because even this one that's an AMD desktop it's all desktop coolers and I'm sitting less than six feet away from where all my servers are so I just didn't want loud rack mounted servers Go ahead and connect real quick. I'll show you this one while I'm here. My data recovery NAS. So I have some top secret tools. I'm not going to show you really anything other than. Yeah, I can remote in and do file transfers from here. But I think that's about it. You guys have a good one. I hope everybody's staying safe. Good night.